Let's face it, the personal statement is daunting. You essentially need to sell yourself to the admissions tutor on one side of A4, and it's possibly going to be the most important thing you've written in your life so far. But I think for medicine, we have it easier than for other subjects. This is because the admissions tutors are looking for certain things. And if we know about these things, they can really play to our advantage. In this video, we'll be exploring what things you should have in your personal statement, as well as things to avoid. In addition, we'll be looking at what research heavy institutions are expecting in their candidates for their personal statement. These include universities such as Oxbridge and the London universities. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name's Rohan. I'm a first year medical student studying at the University of Cambridge. And today we're going to be taking a deep look at the personal statement. We will start this video by kind of going over what the general mindset you should adopt when writing the personal statement and things to do before you start writing. Then we'll look at the general structure in quite some depth before talking about the editing and drafting part of the process. There'll be timestamps somewhere below, but let's get started. So I like to think of the personal statement like writing an essay, where the title is why should you be chosen for interview at our university? This way it's easier to structure your paragraphs in point, evidence, explain, manner. Or in our case, key quality, example, reflection, linking back to medicine. And it's this reflection part which is the most important. And we'll be going over how we can integrate reflection into every point you make in the personal statement. The most important questions you should be answering in your personal statement is why you want to do medicine, do you understand what key qualities a doctor should have? And where have you demonstrated these qualities in your experiences so far? Okay, so now that we've got a good mental model about how we should approach our personal statement, let's consider what things we should be doing before we sit down to write the personal statement. So our first port of call before writing the personal statement is to check out the university website, just to see if they have any guidance on what sort of content we should be including. For example, Cambridge explicitly say that they base their judgment on the personal statement solely on the academics mentioned. They're looking for supercurricular accomplishments and don't really care about unrelated extracurricular activities. Basically, this means although we can include details about our extracurricular activities, it has to be linked to medicine in a tangible way and be relevant. So some resources I would suggest to get you started. If you can, I would recommend checking out the ISC book. It has hundreds of example personal statements and it's a fantastic resource. I'll leave a link in the description box below. You'll notice patterns that are common to their structure and how they integrate examples with reflections. You can definitely use them to draw inspiration, but do not copy them because they will find you out. Also it has graduate personal statements which have their own unique considerations. So definitely check that out if you're a graduate student. Also, you can ask the years above if you can see theirs. So for example, in our school, we had a medicine society and every year we used to ask the medicine applicants to contribute their personal statement to this document. So by the end, we had like 30 or so personal statements, which the future years can look at and kind of draw inspiration and see how we've structured things and how in detail we've gone into stuff. So that's definitely something you can do if you can get in contact with people in a year above, that can really be a good resource for you. Also, if this is not an option, check out the Medic Collective because they've collated a bunch of top ranking personal statements which are available free online. Finally, and possibly most importantly, you need to create a checklist of all the key qualities a doctor must have. These are buzzwords which you should be drip feeding into your personal statement and have examples where you've demonstrated these qualities in either your work experience, volunteering, academia, or extracurricular activities. Some of the main qualities you should be thinking about are the following but not limited to communication skills, teamwork, leadership, empathy, time management, taking the initiative and so on. Right, so now that we've done all this stuff, let's think about the general structure we should be adopting for our personal statement. So your general paragraph structure should include an introduction, a paragraph where you talk about your work experience, a paragraph talking about volunteering, a paragraph for academia or supercurricular activities, a little bit for extracurricular activities, and finally a conclusion. Let's start with the intro. So I think with the medicine personal statement, you've got to consider that the admissions tutors are reading hundreds of these every day. So it's really good to keep it simple and start with an upfront conclusion. By this I mean this should be the top reason why you want to study medicine. For many people this will be their love of human physiology and also their desire to help people. But although that's true for most people, we kind of have to be a little bit more authentic. 
Some people include a personal story through an illness or encounter with the medical profession. But personally, I don't think this is that appropriate. It's a bit too personal for this purpose. Like, unless you actually had a personal or family encounter with medicine, which inspired you to decide to become a doctor, I wouldn't include it. Because it's almost like you're taking advantage of that situation for your personal statement. And it might not come across as the most professional thing. Many people start off with a specific example from their work experience and use this as a springboard to mention some aspects of medicine that they admire. This I think is a more suitable way of starting because you're not just stating that you love medicine, but you're providing a concrete example where you've demonstrated this to back it up. The introduction should be no more than two or three sentences and should flow nicely into the next paragraph, which is about work experience. The work experience paragraph should have one or two incidences from your work experience ideally from different healthcare settings. Even though you may have done much more work experience, picking only a few allows you to go into more depth and to demonstrate reflection. In this paragraph, you need to identify key qualities of a doctor which you observed and how this kind of enhanced your understanding of the medicine profession. Also, try to pick incidences which challenge you. For example, did you see a doctor work under pressure? or deal with a difficult patient. These things show that you have a well-rounded view of the medicine profession, and you're aware that it's not gonna be just a bed of roses. So with these things in mind, let's go on to the volunteering paragraph. The section on volunteering ideally should be some type of long-term commitment. So about between six and 12 months, where you've been working in the community helping people. This is a really good place to showcase where you've shown empathy and enhance your communication skills. I know this year's it's much harder with the pandemic, but if, even if you can just get a little bit in, maybe you helped get medicines for your elderly neighbors, or you just kind of went and went out of your way to make sure people were okay during the pandemic. It really shows your personal side, and this is such a key part of medicine. So it's really important to highlight it and not to neglect it. So some top tips for the work experience and volunteering paragraph. Use the phrase, I organized, because it shows you had the initiative to arrange either work experience or volunteering placements yourself. And having an initiative is an important skill for doctors. And it's a nice way to implicitly state that you have this rather than having to spell it out and wasting precious characters. Top candidates will also be able to weave in some super curricular stuff here. For example, did you see a certain patient with a condition which prompted you to go read a book or an article or give a talk? These things will help show that you've gone deeper and actually reflected more and you can give better flow into the supercurricular paragraph, which we're going to be considering next. The supercurricular or academic paragraph is the most important for Oxbridge applicants. Here, it's really good to mention stuff you've achieved outside the A-level curriculum. For example, if you've done well in any Olympiad papers or entered any essay competitions or given talk to your peers. Also, it's a great place to mention like personal passions about medical sciences and stuff you've engaged in outside of school, such as online webinars, extra lectures, lab placements, and even books you've read. This is a great place to talk about your extended project as well, if you're doing one. The key thing for this paragraph is you need to genuinely come across as interested and fascinated about medicine and the science behind it. Because especially courses which have a strong emphasis on basic sciences and a really clear definition between preclinical and clinical studies, they'll be looking for keen scientists and researchers amongst their applicants. So it's really important to flesh out this paragraph. And just one note of warning, don't pretend to have read something, but actually you haven't, because more often than not, these people who are going to be interviewing you are very familiar with the literature and may have even written whatever you've read yourself. So that can be a really sticky situation, so watch out for that. <laughs> Don't worry if you haven't got much for this paragraph yet, there's still time to do some reading. Check out my applying to medicine document down below, where I've given suggestions for stuff you can read. You can start off with some BBC Health articles and pick out some interesting stuff. For example, there's bound to be some interesting articles about COVID. Not necessarily like the heavy molecular biology stuff, but stuff like government policy, epidemiology, and where vaccine trials are at at the moment are genuinely interesting stuff. You can then use these articles as a springboard for further research, such as looking at a few journal articles. So hopefully I've given you some ideas about what to include in this really critical paragraph. Even if you're not applying to a research heavy institution, 
it's still important to show that you're engaging in the science because at the end of the day, medicine is a career of lifelong learning and you're never just completely isolated from the science. So it's really important that to show that you're able to engage with the literature, even if it's just in a small way. Now let's move on to the extracurricular paragraph. So the extracurricular paragraph is kind of a bit of a flex paragraph in a way, like you're just kind of showing off some of your achievements. And it's a good idea to talk about work-life balance because in this way you can kind of bring in stuff which isn't really related to medicine, but you can justify it in this way. What's really important, as I've stressed earlier, is to make sure you are reflecting on what you write. There's no point in saying like, oh yeah, I got grade eight in instruments, you know, I captained the football team. If you can't back it up with what you've learned from these experiences and how you think by doing these, you're going to be a better doctor down the line. You can also use this paragraph to emphasize that you have good time management skills because particularly if you have engaged with loads of things outside of school, you can state that you have good time management skills and you can use this to suggest that you can handle the intense workloads of a medicine degree, for example. For this paragraph, there's a real tendency just to go on listing all your achievements. But remember, you can't just state random achievements and it has to be linked back to medicine in some way. This is why it's so important you should only be picking out your high yield, most impactful stuff. Some top tips for the extracurricular paragraph, which I don't really hear mentioned that often. First of all, and this is something which can really help save some of those precious characters, is mention some of your extracurricular achievements outside your personal statement, within the teacher references, or the place where you declare your GCSE grades on UCAS Apply. This will make more sense when you're actually inputting your personal statement onto the system. With your teacher references, ask them if you're allowed to look at the reference, just so you can kind of give them suggestions what to include and what not to include. For example, you can't mention every society you're part of, but maybe get some of the teachers who lead these societies to leave good references for you. Also, for things like Gold Duke of Edinburgh and great achievements in music, you can actually declare these alongside your GCSEs. So this means you don't have to kind of waste space mentioning these in the personal statement where you could be talking about more interesting stuff. Another top tip is to really emphasize leadership qualities, particularly if you're applying to an Oxbridge University. This is because they want to be working with future leaders of the various academic fields they're part of. So anything that you have to suggest this sort of command will really boost your application. But be aware, don't come across as being cocky. There's absolutely no place for that and you'll just leave a really bad impression. And finally, the conclusion should be short and sweet. It should summarize some of the key qualities that you've observed and demonstrated and really convey your passion to be a doctor in the future. It's important to be concise and it should really be well polished like the introduction because you want to leave a good lasting impression. Some people who may, might have started off the introduction with a personal story might make a concluding line about that story and tie it into all the stuff they've been talking about. But to be honest, it's more than okay just to leave it simple and have a nice, concise and succinct closing. Okay, so that's the general structure in depth. Now let's talk about the process of drafting and editing your personal statement. So after brainstorming the key qualities of a doctor to use kind of as a checklist and forming the paragraph structure we've talked about earlier, you're ready to start writing your first draft. For the first draft, ignore the character limit and just get everything down on the Word document. Bear in mind, the first draft of anything is going to be terrible. I, I like the way Ali Abdal puts this. And the first draft of anything it has to be fast, it's going to be bad, and it's probably going to be a bit wrong. But just kind of getting over the fact it's going to be terrible and just starting to write is much easier than staring at a blank cursor and trying to think of the perfect sentence each time. Also, it's a good idea not to start with the introduction and conclusion because those are your most high impact paragraphs and they really have to be well polished. So it's good to start off with something easier like your work experience or your volunteering paragraph and use that as momentum and maybe it can guide how you phrase your introduction or conclusion. Then in subsequent drafts, you can start cutting down the less relevant stuff so it fits within the character limit which is really quite tight. Some techniques you can use to save characters is grouping certain activities together with a common reflection. For example, if you directed like a school play and also happened to captain a sports team, you can conclude that both of those activities taught you leadership skills. Also, you really need to prioritize which are the most high yield examples you're going to go to town with a deep reflection with and the other examples where you have to make do with a more superficial reflection. 
because there just is not enough space to have a deep reflection for everything that you've done. And just one note about the line limit, which is 47 lines. Sometimes you might be within the character limit, but you might be over the line limit for some reason. And in my opinion, it's best not to compromise on the lines between the paragraphs because the way the admission shooters see it, if you only use indents, then they actually see it as a full block of text. And this is just visually very hard to look at and it's probably not gonna engage them as much. And it might make it harder to see like general flow of your personal statement. So even if this means knocking back a couple of characters, I highly recommend leaving in spaces between each paragraph. Don't worry if you find it tough, it's meant to be. It's not something people tend to bash out in an afternoon, but it takes like a couple of weeks to really reflect on it. And at the end of the day, you're never going to be 100% satisfied with what you've written, but there is a deadline and you'll soon settle on something which you feel fairly comfortable with and it's best that you go with that. And I think a general mindset is to aim for a solid person statement which covers all the bases and is well-rounded, polished and just reads well rather than a more extravagant literary masterpiece. Make sure it flows and it tells a nice story. Think of it like an essay, it should be coherent. So basically what I'm saying is don't worry about it too much. Just try to relax and hopefully it should come naturally to you. If it's any source of comfort, it took me eight drafts to finally settle on something I was happy with. So don't worry if it is taking a bit longer than you thought it would take. Another thing, please check your spelling and grammar thoroughly because mistakes really leave a poor impression. Don't rely on the spell check on Word because it does miss some things. Read it out loud if you have to. Also, I recommend popping it on a free version of Grammarly because I've used it in the past for various pieces of work and I do think it is slightly better than the normal word spell check, so utilize that. Also, I'd recommend showing your personal statement to some people. For example, I showed it to my form tutor who'd read many medicine personal statements in the past. So he was in a good position to tell me what works and what doesn't. Another idea is to perhaps show it to a humanities teacher who has decent writing skills. They won't necessarily be the best person to check up on your content, but they can check your grammar and to make sure that it flows nicely. They can also give you some space saving suggestions. Then I would show it to a close family member or friend. They will know you very well. So they're in a good position to tell you if you're portraying the best version of yourself in your personal statement. Finally, you could show it to someone in an older year who's been through the process before and ask them to quickly skim over it, asking for their suggestions. Personally, I wouldn't show it to more than four or five people maximum. This is because you will get conflicting advice so you need to decide for yourself which bits to implement and which bits to ignore. Finally, a little bit about writing style. Have short sentences. There's a massive tendency to waffle on in sentences. Don't do this because it can detract from the meaning of the sentence. Avoid sentences with more than two commas. That's a good general rule to check whether you're waffling on too much or not. Also, be sure to use emotive language. Words such as fascinated or relish really convey your enthusiasm and hopefully will make the admissions shooter want to interview you. However, don't fall into the trap of using a thesaurus for every word. Your work will come across as fake and it might take away from what you're trying to tell the admissions shooter. In the words of Orwell, don't use a long word when a shorter word will do. Also, try use the active form of the verb wherever possible. This helps cut out some unnecessary words and hopefully will make it more engaging for the reader. Remember, we're aiming for a polished piece of work, but not a literary masterpiece. So don't worry if you don't have the most flamboyant writing style. So that brings us to the end of this video about the medicine person statement. Remember to like and subscribe and click the bell icon so you can stay notified for more videos about applying to medical school in the UK. Also, please leave a comment down below if you have any questions and I'll definitely get back to you on that. Stay tuned for a video I'll be releasing soon where I go through the personal statement which got me into Cambridge. So thank you very much for listening and bye for now.